Okay, well, let's move on now with a look at today's newspapers here in France with Flo. Hi there. Hi, Kat. So, uh, grabbing headlines today, this uh, new surveillance bill that we've been talking about, so uh, currently being debated in Parliament. That's right. Now, you have to keep in mind the uh, timing of this new legislation. It comes just a couple of months after those Charlie Hebdo attacks uh, here in Paris. Now, it was, this legislation is designed to monitor would be Islamist attackers, but civil liberty groups are sounding the alarm saying that actually it's going to pave the way to mass surveillance of French mm. citizens. Let's take a look at L'Opinion today. L'Opinion, the pro-business paper, is actually rather critical of uh, this new law, especially uh, the Prime Minister, Manuel Valls. You can see they're talking about how, how Valls s'est pris les pieds dans le tapis. He basically tripped up mm -hmm. with this law. And L'Opinion accuses the Prime Minister of actually acting out of emotion, acting too quickly in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo attacks. Well, it has Basically, been an emotional time, has It's been it? very emotional, but L'Opinion says perhaps a little bit more time, a little bit more reflection should have gone into this new uh, law because, after all, the bill will allow intelligence agents to tap phones and emails without the permission from a judge. So very, very different change uh, compared to the current law. Uh, and L'Opinion says all this is way too intrusive and there aren't enough checks and balances. It certainly sounds like a very blunt tool. Uh, we've heard from the detractors uh, who were outside the uh, National Assembly yesterday. But there are supporters as well. There are supporters, especially... Uh, among the right, actually, which is interesting because this is a bill coming from the socialist government, but even public opinion. This is according to uh, Le Figaro. Now, first of all, I pulled out this article where it actually kind of makes fun of the law's critics, saying that just like after the Edward Snowden scandal, they're brandishing this threat of some kind of Orwellian mass surveillance. But this, this shouldn't really overshadow the major challenges that France is really facing right now in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo attacks. And this article talks about about how public opinion actually is supporting this kind of mass surveillance. Actually, it pulls out a poll that was carried out one year before the Charlie Hebdo attacks. 57% of people uh, at that time agreed that general surveillance was justified uh, in order to fight against organized crime. And that is even more uh, true today, according to Le Figaro. OK, well, all, uh, elsewhere in uh, government business, uh, some cultural news, uh, budget cuts in the culture sector. That's right. This is L'Humanité, the communist paper. They've invited an actor, Philippe uh, Toronto, to be the editor-in-chief uh, for the day. And he's lashing out against budget cuts that he likens to a suicide, actually. Tightening the belt on culture is a suicide. That's that quote you can see there on the front page of L'Humanité. Now, this year, due to uh, budget cuts, dozens of festivals across France are going to be cancelled. You can see a map of, of them, actually. They're calling uh, it a Humanité. massacre of festivals. A massacre. Very strong words. Very strong words. We're talking about music, theatre, cinema, all sorts of festivals. Uh, he says this is a, a disastrous collapse, uh, and this has devastating consequences. And it's, it's interesting, his, his point of view, actually. He says that we're not just talking about artists being out of work, we're talking about thousands of encounters that aren't going to happen because in the wake of the January tax, there was a big debate here in France about le vivre ensemble, how can we live better together? Mm. Uh, he, he says part of that comes through art uh, and what all we have right now though is mass surveillance. Very interesting. All right, a quick word now then on that uh, Le Pen family saga we were just telling you about. Uh, this was yesterday. The founder of the far-right National Front Party, Jean-Marie Le Pen, saying he's pulling out of regional elections to make way for his granddaughter. That's right, his granddaughter, uh, Marion Maréchal Le Pen. She uh, actually gives an interview to Le Figaro today. Uh, so keep in mind, she's 25, the youngest MP in France, a growing star in the National Front. She's the apple of her grandfather's eye also gets along quite well with her aunt, but could be a future headache for her today. In this interview, though, she doesn't pick sides in this family feud. She says that she uh, is loyal to both her grandfather and her aunt. Now, if this whole Le Pen family feud is confusing for you, I definitely recommend an article in The Daily Beast today, which pulls it together, picks it apart, and explains everything for you. You can see here, it talks about the winning strategy behind this family feud. Yeah, particularly confusing, because they all seem to have the same name, <laughs> exactly. don't they? Marie, Marion, that sort of thing. Uh, let's move on with a final word on the Olympics now. 
Paris hoping, crossing their fingers to finally get the summer games back. That's right. Now, in French, there's an expression that says, l'important c'est de participer. The most important thing is to participate. Well, but, that is true. But <laughs> check out the front page of Aujourd'hui en France. They say, no, the important thing is to win. Uh, <laughs> France, uh, well, Paris is still very bitter about losing the 2012 uh, Olympic Games to London. Uh, but uh, Le Parisien has lots of hope. And in fact, looks at mistakes not to make again. Uh, uh, and one of my favorite mistakes is don't be too arrogant.